surgery remains the mainstay of treatment and is the is the main is the main treatment that can cure these patients having said that surgery alone is inadequate for gastric cancer as well as esophageal adenocarcinomas apart from the early stage diseases that is stage 1a and stage 1b even up to stage 2a you have a survival of more than 70% in patients who are treated alone with surgery but once you go beyond stage 2b 3a 3b 3c and beyond you can see that the recurrence risks are very high and the overall survival is dismal in the absence of systemic therapy and this is seen both for gastric cancers as well as for uh, g junction adenocarcinomas so what are the aims of uh, neoadjuvant therapy and this is irrespective of whether you're considering only chemotherapy or only radiotherapy or a combination that is concurrent ctrt the main advantages are that you are able to downsize the tumor you are able to increase the r0 resection rate and one important part of downstaging the tumor is to achieve a complete pathological response you can treat micrometastatic disease and with all this you can improve the overall survival now achieving a pathological complete response is a good prognostic indicator but it is not a surrogate for overall survival and that is that is something that is important for us to remember here the disadvantages of uh, systemic neoadjuvant therapy is that there may be an interval progression and that can uh, lead to an undesectable disease so you may lose that time in doing a surgery for a patient having said that this also is an indirect test of the biology of the tumor treatment toxicity can sometimes lead to a delay in definitive therapy there is a significant risk of increased surgical complications and definitely a certain group of patients may actually be over treated with uh, systemic therapy the trend of new adjuvant uh, therapy is more from the west where screening programs are not there and where patients uh, present with larger tumors as opposed to the asian countries where the tumors are frequently early stage and in, in which uh, in which situations upfront surgery followed by adjuvant therapy is preferred whereas in the west most patients have locally advanced disease and require downstaging for an r0 resection i think similarly in our population of patients also uh, we have patients who typically present more often with locally advanced disease and therefore are suitable candidates for new adjuvant therapy so there are a lot of challenges as we go through data there is a completely different approach taken in western studies and asian studies uh, there is a very a large variation in the percentage of different subtypes so for example low esophagus versus g junction versus stomach so there are varying proportions and these we know can affect the results of a study. there is very limited data in the management of patients who come with a t4 disease and in patients who have a performance status in more of more than one in fact a ps of more than 1 is something that i see routinely in more than 60 or 70 percent of my patients and therefore it is very difficult to replicate the clinical trial data also prospective data especially randomized prospective phase 3 data from india is extremely limited most of what we rely uh, from india is on retrospective studies and this is very important because the biology of the disease is very different in the east as well as the west <laughs> so let's just go through the evolution of perioperative therapy and this is with regards uh, to uh, primarily uh, perioperative chemotherapy as well as i have included data from the cross trial so the first trial that really changed the management of uh, g junction and stomach tumors was the magic trial that was in 2006 then we had the uh, french accord trial the ffcd trial which again evaluated a new adjuvant chemotherapy or peritri or perioperative chemotherapy versus surgery and then in 2012 we had the dutch cross trial and 2017 we had the flot 4 aio trial which has now uh, come to be the standard of treatment so the magic trial basically uh, randomized patients to undergo surgery directly or receive three cycles of ecf then surgery and then three cycles of post operative ecf this was pr primarily patients uh, more than 3/4 of the patients were gastric adenocarcinomas and uh, the remaining were esophagus and g junction tumors the surgical outcomes in this uh, study were that that there was a definite downstaging there was an increase in the curative re re resections an increase in the early t stage as well as an increase in the end stage 
in the group of patients that received chemotherapy first followed by surgery as opposed to the ones who went upfront for surgery. And there was an improvement in the progression-free survival as well as the overall survival. The absolute gain in the five-year survival was 13%. And the median OS benefit was approximately four months. The next trial was the, uh, the French ACCORD trial or the FFCD trial, where again, patients in a similar fashion either underwent surgery alone or received two to three cycles of only cisplatin and 5-FU, followed by surgery and then cisplatin and 5-FU once again. Here, the representation of patients was different. Castric was only one-fourth, and esophagus and G-junction were the remaining. So this was completely different in the selection of disease as compared to the MAGIC trial. Although the, uh, the chemotherapy backbone was roughly similar, in the MAGIC trial, you had epirubicin with cisplatin and 5-FU, and here you had only cisplatin and 5-FU. This study again showed there was an increase in the curative surgery, increase in early T stage and increase in uh, nodal stage, resulting in a successful downstaging in many patients. And there was a significant improvement in the overall survival with an absolute benefit of approximately 14%. So the key messages from both of these were that preoperative chemotherapy is possible in almost 90 plus percent of patients. Surgery was possible in 92 to 97% of patients and post-operative therapy, however, was done only in about 42% of patients in the MAGIC trial and 50% of uh, patients in the ACCORD trial, indicating that if you need to give systematic therapy, it is probably best when given initially prior to surgery and not later. What this study also showed us was that epirubicin actually does not have a very strong role in gastric cancer. It has limited activity and just probably adds up to toxicity. The next study uh, was, the, uh, was a cross study. Now, this was uh, published in 2012. And this is a study of new adjuvant chemo radiation plus surgery versus surgery alone for esophageal or uh, junctional cancers. And uh, these patients were randomized to undergo surgery alone versus uh, neoadjuvant chemo radiation. The choice of chemotherapy was paclitaxel with carboplatin, and the radiation dose was 41.4 gray. This is a different dose of radiation as compared to the radical dose of radiation uh, where you give uh, 60, up to 60 gray uh, over six weeks. Surgery was done after four to six weeks after completing uh, chemo radiation. So, um, a significant 58% of patients were distal middle third, and about 22% of patients had uh, G junction tumors. No patient had a T4, so patients had either T1, T2, T3, or uh, N0 or N1. Again, uh, in this study, 23% of patients were squamous, and 75% of patients had a uh, adenocarcinoma adeno, uh, histology. The R0 resection was achieved in almost 92% of patients in the chemo radiation surgery arm as compared to only 69% in the surgery group. And there was a significant improvement in the overall survival as seen in the slide on the left. If you see the pre-planned uh, analysis on the right, uh, this, the group of squamous cell carcinomas who received new adjuvant chemo radiation followed by surgery did best followed by the group of uh, adenocarcinomas who, who, who underwent neoadjuvant chemotherapy uh, plus surgery, uh, indicating that the cross-protocol way of treating patients uh, has a higher benefit for squamous uh, histology as compared to adenocarcinoma histology. There was no significant uh, difference in the uh, surgical complications or the post-operative complications in these two arms, as a result of which for patients who have lower esophagus, G-junction, uh, squamous carcinoma, or adenocarcinoma, the cross protocol, that is new adjuvant chemo radiation with paclitaxel carboplatin and 41.4 uh, grays of radiation uh, became the standard of care followed by surgery. Uh, what about uh, chemotherapy in the new adjuvant setting versus chemo radiation therapy? So you have a new res uh, study. Here, preoperative patients either went on to receive uh, cisplatin with 5-FU or the same chemotherapy with radiation. So there was a significant improvement in the R0 resection as well as the pathological response, 87 versus 74 and 28 versus 9% pathological CR 
but there was no improvement uh, in the overall survival. As a result of which, neoadjuvant chemotherapy is not a very preferred option uh, unless it is a part of perioperative strategy. Similarly, in this retrospective uh, propensity matched analysis, which was done, where patients underwent uh, either neoadjuvant uh, chemotherapy plus surgery or neoadjuvant chemoradiation plus surgery, there was a significant improvement in the R0 resection rate, 92% versus 78%, as well as an improvement in the PATH-CR, 27% versus 5%, but no improvement uh, in the overall survival. So while your pathological CR is improving uh, and your R0 rate is improving, it probably does not have uh, any advantage either, either way uh, when you talk about the overall survival. So uh, when we speak about chemoradiation in the setting, I think the cross uh, study has the maximum data and has thus become the standard of care. Uh, another study, what, that is the uh, INT0116 or the McDonald regimen, was a study where surgery was done for gastric cancer and then patients went on to receive radiation along with chemotherapy, a single agent drug of 5-fluorouracil was used. There again, there was an improvement in the median OS from 27 months to 36 months. This was the previous standard of care, but there has been a lot of criticism for the McDonald regimen, primarily because in those days, T2 resection was not the standard of, chemo of surgery. And it has been postulated that this improvement in survival by adjuvant radiation is because it actually covered up uh, for the inadequate surgery that was done in those times. What really changed the picture from the point of uh, perioperative study was uh, treatment was in 2017, where you had the FLOT4 AIO study. Here, patients uh, with adenocarcinoma of the gastric cancer or GE junction uh, went on to be randomized into two arms, one which received the older regimen of ECF3 followed by resection and then ECF3 versus the new regimen that was FLOT4, resection and then FLOT4. So the difference between the two is that in the uh, FLOT regimen, you use 5-FU, leucovorin, oxaloplatin and docetaxel. Uh, and the whole point was whether this was a more tolerable and a better efficacious regimen as compared to the ECF regimen. The primary endpoint here was the OS. Uh, in this, uh, in the FLOT study, uh, about 44% of patients uh, had a stomach adenocarcinoma and 56% had G-junction adenocarcinomas. There was a significant improvement uh, in the resection rate as well as the R0 resection rate when you, when you compared FLOT versus ECF. And there was no difference in the surgical complications or the other surgical outcomes. So, um, so by using FLOT, you could improve the number of patients who could undergo surgery, surgical resections as well as uh, the R0 rate. Um, however, the surgical morbidity was not really different or did not worsen by the use of FLOT chemotherapy. Uh, there was a significant improvement in both the progression-free survival as well as the overall survival uh, with regards to with regards to uh, the FLOT regimen. And the projected five-year overall survival rates with the FLOT regimen was 45%. The toxicity profile between FLOT and ECF uh, are well established and were known. So you had more diarrhea with FLOT and you had more neuropathy with FLOT. Uh, similarly, you had more uh, infections and neutropenia with FLOT. Having said that, the mortality between FLOT and the ECF arm was no different. Um, with regards to the commencement of post-operative chemotherapy, patients who were treated with FLOT uh, uh, had about 60% of them started post-operative therapy as compared to 52 from ECF and about 46% uh, completed post-operative therapy as compared to 37%, indicating that more patients in the FLOT arm could complete the treatment pre-op as well as in the post-operative setting. The benefit of the FLOT was in all prognostic groups. So whether it was a T1, a T1, T2, or a T3, T4, an N positive or a node negative, and the absence or the presence of signet cells, all these six uh, prognostic uh, groups benefited by the addition of FLOT when compared to the ECF regimen. So uh, the FLOT is now the standard of care when we speak of perioperative treatment for stomach cancer. 
that is stomach adenocarcinomas and uh, G junction adenocarcinomas. Now, this is a study that evaluated the, uh, the completion of post-operative therapy in most of the patients who underwent perioperative therapy. So if you look at data from MAGIC, the ACCORD trial, the FLOT, as well as the ECF arm, almost 40 to 60% of patients are not able to complete the plant treatment. It's either because of poor tolerance, poor lot of toxicity, disease progression, or simply refusal to take further treatment. And this is especially in the post-operative period. And therefore, it's again to re-emphasize that in this group of patients, the new adjuvant setting is the best time to administer systemic therapy, whether you speak about radiation or chemotherapy. So as I just mentioned, FLOT is now the gold standard. However, even with FLOT, your five-year OS is just about 45%, uh, which means that there is a lot more to do uh, with uh, in regards to this group of patients.